Good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. An angry mob gathered in downtown Tehran yesterday, chanting slogans attacking the United States. Protesters stole an American flag from a nearby vehicle and set it on fire. America was never great, they screamed. Terrifying. But hold on a sec. That actually didn't happen in Iran, much as it seems like it. It happened in Los Angeles, in our country, the one they say was never great. The screaming, stealing, flag-burning mob was there to express their love and support for Congressman Maxine Waters. Waters had inspired them with rhetoric like this. If you see anybody from that cabinet in a restaurant, in a department store, at a gasoline station, you get out and you create a crowd. And you push back on them. And you tell them they're not welcome anymore, anywhere. Meanwhile, elsewhere in Los Angeles, a newly opened coffee shop was attacked by masked protesters who hurled feces at the building. They said the owner of the building supports Donald Trump's immigration policies. Well, as it happens, the owner is himself an immigrant. I'm confused, he said, but it didn't matter. On the left, the penalty for thought crime is swift and certain, if nonsensical. For disagreeing with the mob on immigration, the immigrant owner is not allowed to make a living. Those are the rules. Well, this lunacy did not come out of the blue. It has been brewing for quite some time. Well, we first saw this brand of extremism on college campuses where student activists demonstrated against new ideas they didn't understand or against any kind of dissent from the narrow orthodoxy of the campus left. Over time, though, their protests became physical and then dangerous. Windows smashed, fires set, people beaten and threatened with death. In the past few months, scenes like that have moved off campus into our world. The left began threatening Trump administration officials who dared to appear in public kicking them out of restaurants and screaming at them on the street. Now they're targeting private citizens who might be sympathetic to the administration. Want to open a small business? Well, you can't do that unless you voice this week's progressive dogmas. That's a lesson corporate America learned years ago and has applied ever since. It is, of course, the very opposite of freedom. The fall elections are less than four months from today. Tempers will rise even higher than they are now. That is guaranteed. Something awful could easily happen. Now, right now, is the time for progressive leaders to douse the fires that they set to calm their inflamed supporters. It is vital they do that. And yet they're doing the opposite. Now they're telling their followers that the president of the United States is a Russian spy, a traitor. The penalty for treason is death. Traitors, of course, must be overthrown. The mob screams, wild with rage. Democrats are banking that that rage will get their voters to the polls in November, and they may be right. It may. It may also destroy the country. Robert Patia was a radio host and an attorney, and he joins us tonight. Robert, thank you for coming on. I have a question Thanks, that I wanted to ask for a long time, someone on the left. Why the flag burning and the attacks on America? Why, is this, the, well, these protests very often devolve into an attack on the country itself its symbols, this chant, America was never great, your founding fathers owned slaves. Why attack the whole country? Well, I think you can find extremists on both the left and the right who do things that are anti-American. The, the same way you have these protesters, you'll have the Charlottesville protesters, on the other hand, who are anti-American. I don't support any of these people who, if you don't like America, get out of America. If you're a neo-Nazi, get out of America. Okay, so let's I have them no all problem away. with that. But, there's, but, but hold on. Okay. And I think it's a fair point. But the scale is very different. So you have the Charlottesville riot or whatever it was last August, a year ago. You haven't seen anything like that since. The NFL has been in a continuous controversy over kneeling during the national anthem, an attack on a national symbol. Left-wing protests routinely contain attacks on the country. The T-shirt, your country was never great, is for sale online. So is the hat. What is that about? It, I'm not saying there are no conservatives, right-wingers who don't hate America, but there are a lot on the left who do, and they're very open about it. Why? And why don't leaders ever say anything about it?
Well, I think leaders do, and I think it's very easy to find the clips of the most crazy, most extreme elements of the political discourse and make that seem like that is the norm. That is not the norm. Most people who are protesting are saying, we want reasonable policies that all Americans unite, can unite around. And frankly, I think a large part of this falls on the president. You know, President Truman had a placard on his desk saying, the buck stops here. That's what the, that is what President Trump has right. to take up and understand, that he has to bring these parties together. If people are protesting over the immigration policy, then do like Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan would do, and you bring together the stakeholders, you you hammer out an immigration reform bill, you bring right. it before the American people, you discuss it, and that will tamp down the uh, that will tamp down these protests. But leaving this vacuum Boy, of information is... where people think the children are being kidnapped, that's not going to work. Okay, so I agree with a lot of what you're saying, actually. I do want a rational conversation about what's best for the country. Try to do that every night on this show. It's pretty hard to do that, though, when people are saying, not just random protesters in front of a donut shop in West L.A., but, I don't know, the ranking members on the Democratic side of the House and Senate are calling the President of the United States a traitor, someone who's committed treason, a death penalty offense. If you really believe the President was a Russian agent, as elected members of Congress have said today, then how could you do anything but try to overthrow him? That's not a predicate for reasonable discussion, is it? Well, absolutely not. But what, what, what I think has to happen is the president hasn't explained what the point of the meeting with Putin was, what happened in that meeting with him for those two hours, why there was no other members of the intelligence community or national security staff there with them, why he offered to have Russians interrogate American citizens. So when you have this information vacuum, this falls in a large part on the president's communications well, wait, team. Wait, wait, wait a second. Then, then, then why Americans are they? But hold on. on. Hold on. I mean, I could look, I could rebut a lot of what you just said. The president can't hand any anybody over to the Russians, despite what Democrats keep saying. That, that doesn't work that way. You're not allowed, what is he going to, you know, inject them with barbiturates and throw them on a plane to Mont I mean, that's, it's ludicrous. But I, it was not my job to defend Trump. I'm just asking, if you don't know what happened, why are you jumping to the conclusion that he committed treason? That's what elected members of Congress are saying. They're using the word treason. If you really believed he was committing treason, why wouldn't you try to overthrow him or hurt him? Seriously. But remember... But remember, this goes back to the concept of the buck stopping with the president. He has to use his bully pulpit not to bully people, but to articulate a message to America. What do you mean? I, I but hold on, but what do you America say if somebody well, says, wait, if I said, if I said, I don't agree with you, you're, you've committed treason, you're a traitor, you're a sleeper cell for one of our enemies, what do you say to that? I mean, honestly, what like, you, that's, what you, that's well, not what you say the that, beginning of a conversation. That is being, that's a call for violence. Look, Tucker, I practice criminal right. defense every day. And what ends up happening is people accuse your client of everything under the sun in the indictment. But what you do is argue back your point. You say that, well, the reason I was meeting with Putin was because we have interests in Syria that need to be articulated between the two parties. Because well, we have to said that. Uh, work on I mean, oil and gas pipelines. The, he's not getting his messaging out. And when you leave this vacuum out there, that's when you have members of the Republican Party. Are you being serious? I mean, are you being serious? Down. Look, uh, again, it's. Whatever. I don't care about the Republicans. Everyone always says, oh, the Republicans say it, too. I, I couldn't be less impressed with them as a group. So it, that means nothing to me. <laughs> but will you at least concede that calling someone a traitor is a conversation ender, not a starter? And maybe you should wait for any... evidence that a person has betrayed his country before calling him a traitor. Is that fair? Well, well that, that's fair, but let's not pretend that the last eight years, the last 16 years didn't happen. When you had people claiming that Obama was a Kenyan who was part of a sleeper cell sent here and part of a madrasa, let's understand this discourse didn't start with Trump. No we member have to of do Congress something to tap ever it down. said that. Joe Walsh no, yelled no, out, no, you no lie of during a presidential ever address. Said that. Okay, well, he and, did and, lie, and actually, Tr but lying and, is very different from being Trump part of a sleeper cell. And while being a private citizen, right. President Trump pushed a birtherism idea for years. Let's understand that the buck stops with the president in order to tap these things down. Have a conversation with so the American people. Say exactly what you're. Of treason. The right. buck stops with you. You are the leader of the free yeah. world. I, I don't understand years, your point, but I, I, uh, right. I appreciate. I appreciate part of what you're trying to say, uh, but I don't understand the rest. Robert, it's nice to see you tonight. Thank you for coming on. Thanks, Tucker. A professor at. Yale University, which is like an Ivy League school that people once upon a time considered impressive, but smart people no longer do, is now calling on fellow progressives to actively defy federal law by hiding illegal immigrants. His name is Greg Gonsalves. 
He's supposedly a law professor, and yet he tweeted this recently, quote, we hide immigrants from ICE if we have to. The professor says this would be, quote, civil disobedience rather than aiding and abetting criminal activity. Lawrence Jones is editor-in-chief of Campus Reform. He's been following this and joins us tonight. Um, this leads to the larger hey, question, Tucker. Lawrence, of why we even bother to fund universities. They're a joke, but we're getting to that later yeah. in the show. To the specifics of this case, how did he yeah. express this? What was the response? Well, I asked a simple question. I am an editor-in-chief. I'm a journalist. This is something that the left said uh, is being attacked. So I asked the question, are you guys aiding and abetting? Simple question. He, in return, blocked me and decided to uh, go after my organization and say that we should be on the list for the Southern uh, Poverty Law Center. That simple. <laughs> the Southern Poverty Law. That's the fake civil rights group that... Yeah. Uh, gets yeah. people banned, that crushes the free speech rights of people it disagrees with. Right, yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with them. Um, so he didn't respond at all. Do you find, in a meaningful way, do you find it ironic that a law professor would be calling yeah. on his students to ignore the law? Well, we couldn't find his actual law degree, so, I mean, I don't even understand how he's teaching students about the law. Um, you know, you know, it's crazy, Tucker, Wait, because— I'm, I'm sorry, what do you—I'm you know, you mean, you, sorry, I'm interrupting you. What, what do you mean by that? You couldn't find his law degree? Well, we couldn't find his law degree. We couldn't find a JD behind his name, but he's he's teaching at the school, so I, I you know he must have a PhD. But it, it's not specifically. He's not a lawyer. He's not a practicing lawyer. We couldn't find it. So unless he has huh. records that are being hidden, we would love to, love to see that. But Tucker, my point is, there's a lot of laws that I don't like. I'm a civil libertarian, and I I, I want to push the war on drugs yeah, that agree. went after my community. I didn't I didn't like those communities. But I don't get to say right. DEA. I get the harbor in a bad criminal. That just don't doesn't work that way, and so the the instead of him answering my question, uh, he went after the president of our company because he's an old white man, and he didn't want to face the black man, the black reporter that asked him the question, "Are you aiding and abetting?" Just a simple question. But let's ta attack the old white guy. <laughs> That's kryptonite for a guilty white liberal. <laughs> That's hilarious. Right, Lawrence. Thank you very much. Good to see you. <laughs> That's so Thanks, good. sucker. Dan Bongino is a former Secret Service agent, NYPD officer, now an NRA TV contributor, frequent guest on this show, because he's smart and concise and thinks stuff through. So, um, Dan, we've done a bunch of shows on this topic, but we're going to continue to because I think I'm not imagining the acceleration of the rhetoric. And when rhetoric reaches a certain point, it becomes violence. Where are we on that continuum, do you think? Yeah, I'm worried. We're, uh, we're, we're past the event horizon right now in the black hole, Tucker. And the reason I'm worried is uh, I think what's going on here, um, and, and I'm not trying to be an amateur sociologist here, but in the past we've had kind of this iron triangle of activist groups, liberal politicians, and the media. And their tactic, Tucker, has been very strictly enforced gaslighting. Repeat a narrative, however false it is. Republicans are racist, misogynist. We've heard them all in the past. Repeat it confidently and isolate people from the truth by collectively reporting the narrative together. I think what's happening right now is Trump just absolutely refuses to back down to this. He'll use his Twitter account, he'll use the bully pulpit of the White House, and he will not play the typical rhino game of the past where the minute the R word or the M word or the xenophobic word comes out, he backs down. Therefore, to wrap this up, he um, average levels of aggression aren't working, Tucker. So instead of dialing it back and re-strategizing, they're going to, like, hyper-aggression at this point, and that's where we are now, which really worries me. But it's the supposedly responsible people who are doing it. I, twice or three times this week, I've thought, now, if this were Obama who went to Helsinki and met with Putin, and I've never liked Obama, I thought he was bad for America, and all of a sudden Republican leaders were calling him a traitor, would I sit back and say, yeah, he's a traitor, or would I say, what do you mean by that? I mean, where are the responsible people on the left? It's okay to hate, to not like Trump. I get it. But why are they sitting back and allowing the leaders of their party to say things that are totally reckless and insane, which they are? 
because Tucker, they've ginned up the base to such a point. You saw it in the opening segment with your debate with the liberal radio host. They've ginned up the base into believing that this man is actually these things. These are false. They're utterly absurd. The fact that we're repeating them, we've lost 10 IQ points talking about it. But they've ginned up their base into believing exactly. that this man is, the Trump, by the way, is a fascist. What else is the appropriate response? It's nothing but critical theory, you know, that acknowledges a construct of power kind of thing. And this, we have to shut him down. It's not even worthy of debate. And the hyper-aggressive response is the only response if you believe Trump is a fascist, which is absolutely absurd and ridiculous. This Russia story is making us all very dumb. I'm not going to be able to balance my checkbook by next week. It's Dan Bongino, thank you very much. Good to see you. Yes, sir. You too. Well, last night we broke the story that